Hi, and thanks for tuning in today for today's Connect Video Tuesday, February 23rd. And a couple things uh, to remind you of. Uh, thank you to everyone who attended the business meeting, the discussion meeting this past Sunday. I thought it was very helpful and, and informative, a great tone and spirit there. So thank you very much for that. Uh, great feedback that uh, we will go over and talk about uh, at our elder meeting coming up uh, next week. Um, next Gen Kids, our kids ministry really needs some help. We're not able yet to fully staff a uh, a, a kids program for the 11 o'clock hour. So we really need people that can help out during the 11 o'clock hour. If that's something you might be able to do, please contact the church office or Kim Burko. Are you new to the church? Then we have a lunch coming up for you March 7th. You have to RSVP for this so that we can plan accordingly for the food and, and materials that we'll hand out. Uh, and then also after uh, you attend that, there's an option for attending the welcome class, March 3rd or March 24th. Those are identical classes. So you go to one of those. That's a little more informative, a little deeper dive into the history of the church, ministries of the church, um, mission, vision, all those kinds of things. Uh, that'll happen on Wednesday, March 3rd or March 24th. Then we'll have Believer's Baptism coming up April 18th is when that is going to happen. So it's always exciting. It's a great celebration day for the church when we have baptism. If you have not been baptized after you came to faith in Christ, then this is what this baptism is about and for. Uh, so please contact the office if you have any questions about that or, in, or if you're uh, interested in that. New Member Sunday. We'll be welcoming new members to the church on May 9th. So that's a little bit further out, but it's one of those things that we try and plan for. New Member Sunday, May 9th. Please, if you have questions, let me know. And uh, just another quick reminder, we're planning for the Fall Festival later this year. We have our first planning meeting coming up this coming Sunday after the 11 o'clock service. If you are interested in attending, if you want to help out with that, uh, we'll be providing lunch for that, but please let us know if you're interested to attend so that we can have enough food for that meeting. Um, the other thing is we continue to see COVID numbers going down very, very quickly. So that's incredible and so encouraging for all of us. And uh, so I hope you're seeing that also, that you're able to track that with all the different um, the hospitals and just everything is is just plummeting so fast. So that's a great answer to prayer. We really look forward to spring ministry, all these things I just mentioned, and Easter and everything else. And uh, so it's exciting times that we uh, seem to be coming to a, a nice point of getting a little bit back to normal here, hopefully pretty soon. We're still, everything's written in pencil still, but uh, we're, we're excited about where the trend is. A couple of quick jokes for you. I heard a, I heard there was a, a new store called Moderation. <laughs> they have everything there. <laughs> okay. And what did the daddy tomato say to the baby tomato? Catch up. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. Hey, today I want to talk about just that the topic I have is the topic of be still. To to be still. I've, I've found that there are seasons in life, times in life, that are just busier than others, right? Times where the work seems compressed into a smaller window of time, and it's usually more intense and stressful due to deadlines and the, the amount of work kind of crammed in to a shorter amount of time. Do you notice those kind of fluctuations in your pace of life and in, in how you live and your work and things like that. Uh, Self-awareness is a very valuable insight to have, to develop, is to be aware of these things. When these times of ongoing intensity kind of occur in your life, how do you cope with that? How, how, how do you manage that? How do you manage your thoughts and your temperament throughout those times when the pace is different from, say, 
what's normal, <laughs> if you remember what that is. I find these times of compressed intensity to really be part of the regular rhythm and pattern of life. For me as a pastor, it typically coincides with the church calendar, not only the holidays, Christmas and Easter prominently, but also other church events and activities that are just a regular part of church life and the rhythm of church life, like many of the things I just went through in the announcements, right? All the welcome classes, and are you new lunch, and baptism, new member Sunday, uh, all those kinds of things, right? The activity seems to get more intense, when you then include weddings or especially funerals, fun weddings are planned at least, uh, funerals are not. So that gets added to the schedule and, uh, and other unplanned events that might come up. And I, I've simply found the best way to manage through these times, because you can't avoid them, they're part of life. The best way I've learned to manage through these times is have a time of stillness. You need to unplug and take your days off that you need to take. You need to take those times off. Those are, those are healthy times. That's why God has a Sabbath, right, for us to step away, to focus on Him. But there's also a personal benefit in, in our own health. But to, beyond that, there's a time of stillness. Time set aside to do nothing but pray, to meditate, to read Scripture, to listen for God's voice. One author says, talking about this topic, says this, quote, We hate stillness. We're restless and fidgety, never fully at home in the present. There's always something productive we should be doing, right? Close quote. That's kind of the feeling I have a lot, right? We must, though, recognize that this runs counter, this idea of, of taking time and, and being still and just going to think, right? It, that runs counter to our American mindset most of the time, doesn't it? But we must also recognize our American mindset is not always right. It's not always good. It's not always healthy. In fact, in this case, our American mindset, I would say, tends to go against what Scripture says. In Psalm 46, in verse 1, it says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. And that's, that's foundational for us to understand, the refuge and strength God is for us. And we're very independent self determined people many times. But God says, no, he's, he's our refuge. He's our strength. And then later on in that psalm, in verse 10, it says, this is the well-known part, right? Be still and know that I am God. I would propose to you that you can only really be still in knowing God, in knowing, in, in, knowing him, being confident in him. You can only be still when you understand he's your refuge and he's your strength. I've, uh, I've mentioned before, I think, that I try to take one afternoon a month to go somewhere quiet. Somewhere alone, just to be still. To think and to reflect and to pray, to read scripture. Just to be alone with God. I find this very difficult to do. <laughs> I'm not naturally wired to do this. It goes against every fiber in my being, in fact. I want to be busy and active and to sit still and listen for God's voice, which usually means a lot of listening. <laughs> uh, it's not easy for me at all. But I have found that these times are, are very rewarding. They're very helpful. They're very insightful for me. Another author, author says this, quote, Foolishness is rampant today in part because we rarely, we are rarely stationary enough to experience stillness. And stillness is a prerequisite for wisdom. I think there's some good insight there, right? We don't see a lot of wisdom because we're so consumed with what we do that we never stop and think. So today, I just hope and pray <clears throat> that you will take some time, figure out what works for you, what day, what time of day, how long of a period of time, but set some time aside to just be in the present, in the moment. Not just thinking about the past or the future, but right now and just in that moment, 
silence your phone and spend some time alone with God and just let him minister to your soul. Let the word of God minister to your soul. And I think you'll be blessed when you do. Can I pray for you? Father, <clears throat> excuse me, Father, we thank you for the reality and the truth that you are our refuge and our strength. Help us to know that, but also to, to actually trust in that, to lean into that. Help each of us to, to be still, to slow down, to think and reflect about you, to read your word, to pray, meditate on your truth, just to be in you. And may that become a regular part of our life's rhythm. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you have a great day, a great week, and we'll see you here for Friday's video. Bye-bye.